That is not soy on my face, that is vitamin E oil, but thank you for being so concerned. Hey everybody, my name is Abby, welcome to the channel. Those are wood saws or something. It's cute. It's cute. I'm living for it. We're in the hangar right now and we're kind of facing towards the back because the lighting is better this way. It is what it is. COVID has got me 14 flavors of messed up. 14 flavors of messed up Baskin Robbins style. COVID has been not bad necessarily it just has made some things weird and I that that's why I wanted to make this video to talk about it so let's get right into it okay here's the thing about training during a global pandemic training during corona COVID-19 la rona whatever you want to call it it uh, for a second I didn't want to I was thinking to wait until it all passed over and until everything was done with and over with. But then when I got to thinking about it, I realized, Abby, there is no reason for you not to train right now. The world is closed. You can't go anywhere. Number two, you can't travel anywhere. It's not just that restaurants are closed. You can't travel anywhere or go anywhere or do anything or be anything. I mean, everything was closed for a good period of like a month or two and we were just all in our houses. There is no better time to study in the world because you have no distractions. You have nothing to spend money on. They normally gotta be in activities and pull up to functions. And I'm not even like, like that. Like I'm not even a party person really, but I like to do things and see people and go places. But during COVID, I told myself, Abby, and I was like, Abby, the world is closed. There's nowhere you can travel. There's nothing for you to spend money on. There's nothing for you to miss out on. Even your tax return is kind of bumpy. Oh, what else do you want? What else do you want? So then I decided to start flight training and stop putting it off and kind of just hope for the best with COVID and hope that the world didn't close down again. The first thing that I have noticed is the skies are emptier. It's just, so unlike 9-11 where planes were grounded uh, legally, like it was illegal to fly for about a day, you couldn't fly, correct me if I'm wrong, but it wasn't illegal this time around. Like people could fly during COVID, but commercial, Thanks bro, thank you for your service, essential worker. People didn't fly because, I mean, most of the planes that fly are airlines, right? Commercial airlines, and ain't nobody was flying and gonna catch COVID and die. So basically the skies are a lot emptier now. They've built back up to normal. I mean, it's about August right now, so things are about back to normal. But I am saying when all of this first started and when I first started flight training, it was a lot emptier in the sky. It was a lot emptier at the airport. It was emptier on the frequency on radio. You're calling tower and you're like the only plane flying in the whole practice area. It has been really weird. Like y'all, like I have done things that I've never been able to do before because the skies are emptier and because ATC, because tower has more time to grant requests and to grant her every wish like a genie in a bottle genie in a tower love that i am all about no crowds i'm all about going to the taxiway and you don't gotta wait for anybody you can just take off right away even if you are an ifr flight plan baby girl ain't nobody in your way ain't nobody else flying you're the only one you are priority because you're on an ifr flight plan and you're the only one in the airspace so atc is like almost too nice they're like weird to have atc like talk to you more than the absolute bare minimum that they have to and i'm like oh man he's really chatty today and then i remembered he just there's nobody else flying like it's only me and hillary you were the only plane in the practice area and we're the only plane that has probably landed at this airport all day today <laughs> another thing about the skies being emptier and just overall being able to do more things with all this space and time is Yo. So this normally does not happen, but I was able to do an instrument approach into PDX, into an international airport. Being able to do a precision approach into an international airport is something that typically doesn't happen throughout your training. It's not common to be able to do that as an instrument student. Um, I do think if you were to do it at night, you would be able to, but ooh, I, this is in the middle of the day. It was 10 a.m. We hit a PDX. It was so crazy. Do you know what, it, what it's like to hear over the radio? Like, to be shooting an approach and hear over the radio because I'm talking to PDX Tower, which that's just crazy. But to be cleared for the approach as a Cessna 172 and then to hear over the radio, caution, wake turbulence 767 ahead of you. And I'm like, come again? Come again? What was that? I didn't quite hear that. What did you say? And later after we landed, I processed it. And my instructor was like, yeah, there was, a, there was a Delta jet like ahead of us and they were cautioning us for their wake turbulence. And I'm like, I know, 
but like that that's wild bro that is wild right before i went missed my instructor bless his heart let me take off my hood for a second like literally three seconds before he yelled at me to put it back on but he let me pop it and i looked down on my left and i saw a delta jet like freaking right there bro right there there was a delta jet and i like put it back on and we took off and i was like what what like that is all of that that we just did would not have been possible without covid so i'm not I'm not thankful for COVID. I feel like that's messed up to say because people died from it. People have lost family members to it. People have had their whole lives kind of ruined. Some people are even homeless because of COVID. But that was my moment where I thought COVID was pretty cool. Like, I'm not gonna lie. But I'm not gonna say I'm thankful for it. Cause I mean, aviation hasn't been all thriving due to COVID. So what I've noticed is that general aviation is sort of thriving, but then professional aviation isn't as much. What I mean by that is I have friends who are professional pilots for either a big airline or a small regional airline, or they fly corporate. And then I have friends that are flying and they are instructors. And my instructor friends are doing very well. They're busier than they've ever been in their life. And they have so many students. And then my other friends who normally are living the dream life, you know, they're making that airline pay and they're doing very well they had to go on leave like voluntary unpaid leave and some of them are even in danger of being laid off it's just really weird to think that the airlines are doing bad and then general aviation and instructing is doing well the covid has made that swap how general aviation is doing so well right now in thriving and flight schools are getting more students because of time which is my third pro i believe it is the third pro so there's more time now like, what are you gonna do? Watch Avatar for the 87th time, which I do recommend, I highly recommend, but you know what I mean. Like, there's only so much Netflix you can watch. There's only so many workouts you can do before you're like, okay, like, let's, let's learn a new skill. And you can learn a new instrument or a new language. I would be doing one of those, probably if I wasn't in flight training. But I thought, man, Abby, COVID is giving you a lot of time. And time is a huge asset. It is a huge blessing. It is a huge, it is a huge financial ability, it's a good thing of life, whatever you want to call it. Time is invaluable. Time is better than gold. And you don't know if you're ever going to have this opportunity of this this time ever again in your life. So yeah, I could have learned Mandarin, I learned Arabic, I could have learned language or just practice guitar and gone better at it. But I was thinking, man, it is a good time to knock out your flight training. Like no cap. If you don't knock out your flight training now, what excuse? Like what, what excuse do you possibly have? One con, um, probably the only con that I can think of for this video is that one reason you wouldn't pursue flight training, right, is due to money. So I have some money saved up and I am blessed enough that I was able to get a job very quickly right after the airline that I work for told me that I had to go on leave. Unpaid, unpaid leave, didn't have a choice. Like you're leaving, like you gotta go on leave right now because we just don't have hours for you. So one con was that I had to take leave from the airline that I work for. I do love that job and I love the income, you know, I love making money. So. Um, that is one con that I did lose my hours due to COVID. I didn't lose my job. I mean, that I will beg to differ. Like, we'll see what happens. You know what I'm saying? And then I got another another job. So I've I'm, like, I don't look forward to the end of this year. I don't look forward to 2021 actually, and all the W twos that I went through for my different jobs during this year of 2020. But one con is. Um, making money is hard during covid my work schedule is not ideal that's not what i would want to do at all i'm at work a lot like i'm not going to talk about my work schedule and uh share that info but it's just it's a lot of time working it's a lot of time at the airport i basically am at the airport every day like if i'm not because i'm not if i'm not there for work right i'm there for a lesson so i've hit like five airports in one day one time because i had a flight lesson it's a blessing to be able to work during this time but also it is a con because my work schedule is not ideal it's not what i would like but just due to covid there is some things we don't have control over and i need to work so even though the work schedule is pretty sucky it's very tiring and it does not work too well with flight training it's working enough and we're gonna get through it and it's really at this point don't make excuses just do it just do what you got to do the other thing about work work hours are hard enough to get and the work schedule isn't ideal and all of that but Man, yo, can I be honest with you? It is stressful to think, do I choose between, you know, making money, going towards my career goals and, and working because I do love work or staying home because I could protect my family and protect the loved ones. And I don't want to be the reason somebody dies or ends up in the hospital or just has to suffer for a week or two or however long you might have COVID and the symptoms. So it is stressful to work during a pandemic. Yo, I'll be honest with you, like, 
I'm working during this pandemic and it's it's been weird to see the change in the airport it has been weird to see it's it, everyone's like really negative sort of not everyone but a lot of co-workers have just been you go through it you, there's a lot of emotions in this year there's a lot of stuff built up because the world is insane right now and 2020 is like yo like who wrote your script like I'm not saying fire God as script writer. I'm just saying like maybe he got a little bit too bored and then 2020 has like everything that 2016 and 2012 tried to be. It is stressful. It's very mentally stressful to go to work and to think like, am I gonna catch COVID? Am I gonna spread COVID to somebody? And when you're like not saying too much, but when your coworkers are catching COVID and then you're surrounded by COVID just so much in your daily life and you're like trying to dodge you with your little mask that like scientifically does not work. It's just, it's really, it's mentally taxing. It's mentally stressful to just deal with what 2020 is as a year. Work with COVID is just, it's just stressful. And also with all the protocol we have to follow. Yo, I'll be honest, it was triple digits. It was 102, 38 degrees Celsius at work the other day. And we have to wear a mask. We still have to wear a mask. So you're in the bin of an airplane that's metal like just to like clear that up and you're like yo like i'm not feeling too all right right now and i'm i'm constantly i'm constantly drinking but like it reaches a point where it, you cannot drink enough your body is just sweating and like you cannot drink enough like i would drink water and i would still be thirsty i drink w more water and my body's like yo like I'm still thirsty and I'm like, I don't know what you want, ho. Like I just drank water. So at work, we have to wear the mask and that causes acne sometimes. It causes sweat, you know, I'm not complaining a whole lot about it. I actually like the mask quite a bit, which I'll probably talk about in another video, but it's just, it is hard to do certain covid regulations at work and i say that because they do change every month on a disrespectful way but like it's weird because like they keep changing like what science is saying and it's just stressful to keep up with that with at work even more so for management who has to keep up with them i feel for management yo that's so hard to keep up with and then, ooh, ooh, let's do it let's step on toes um just really disappointing to see companies that don't take care of the employees this is not essentially aviation related, but it is interesting to see which airlines take care of their employees and which ones like right away just furloughed. And you're like, ah, bruh, like you couldn't have offered like early retirement or like leave or something. You really just, you really just furloughed them right away. Like we're not gonna name names, but like I might put up logos. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's not okay. That's not cool. The truth is aviation goes through highs and lows and like if you don't lows and highs i did it wrong i know that i'm going into this field and i'm going into this career fully knowing that so it's really on me like it's not anyone's fault nobody could have predicted this global pandemic nobody knew it was coming nobody knew anything about it so you have to just ride the waves and you have to ride the waves of life as well like i don't know why i'm doing a surfing analogy when i suck like at surfing but that's the truth aviation goes through highs and lows a lot more than other industries and it's just the way it is like that's one of the things i love about it though whenever i have to wake up for that 4 a.m shift i remind myself abby one thing you love about the aviation industry is that it is highly volatile it's very it's ever changing all the time it's always shifting you have to be so flexible and i think that is kind of exciting now i think i have said everything that needs to be said i think i've taken up your time enough i'll leave i'll sign out i'm gonna say peace out i'm gonna say stay safe study make money save money tell people you love them i think that's it i think that's it love you all thank you for watching and i will see you sometime in like the general regional geographical location of two weeks but like it could be three weeks and like my check right is really soon just like to put that out there but like see you soon I did want to add, and I think it's super important to talk about how you shouldn't lose hope during aviation. I didn't talk about this earlier because I did kind of touch on it, but really quick, like don't, like y'all don't lose hope in aviation because to be honest, aviation does go through highs and lows so much. And one thing I have noticed, people that are older are not so negative about this whole lot of nothing. And then people that are younger are being very pessimistic about it. But it's like, yo, if you're my age, you've already lived through two financial crises. Like, in North America, like 20, 2008, 2009 was the first one. And then now the economy crashed again. And it's a bear market, the stock market crashed and all of that. But you know what? Like, that happens. The world goes in cycles and aviation deals with the cycles a little bit more often than other industries, which we've talked about. But don't lose hope. It can happen. You just, you can't give up. And trust me, I've almost given up a lot. 
I know I'm only like on my instrument, but I've almost given up a lot. But it's just like you you won't see what's gonna happen if you don't keep going. So this is a blooper that I don't know if everyone's going to see, but like don't give up, you know? Don't give up.